Thank you, Vicky. So I'm uh, fully, fully aware that we that I still have to leave some time for the uh, discussions. And also, uh, it is uh, my honor to be here, but also uh, being the last speaker, I am aware that uh, some of my slides will be, uh, well, I won't say the repetition of what has been said already, but I'll call it a systematization. <laughs> so I'll try to, to systematize uh, what has been uh, said already and give you some uh, new information. So the contents will, of my presentation will be as follows. So first I'll give a brief introduction. Then I'll say something about the long-term preservation of digitally signed records. And I'll try to present two case studies. Then I'll speak something about the trusted preservation model as being uh, developed uh, as part of the Interparis Trust project. I'll say something about the blockchain standardization since uh, I flew in yesterday from the Brussels where I have attended uh, ISO uh, meeting on the uh, um, standardization of the blockchain. And then I'll uh, briefly uh, conclude at the end. So first of all, uh, I would like to say that uh, my presentation today will most, for most part of it, uh, be part of the uh, uh, thing that we are doing as a research at the global archival uh, project called Interpares uh, Trust. Uh, particularly, I'll be focusing on a study um, that uh, I'm uh, leading. It's called the Model for Preservation of Trustworthiness of the Digitally Signed, Timestamped, and or Sealed Digital Records, the so-called Truster Pres uh, Preservation Model, uh, which is actually uh, investigating the possibilities of using the blockchain and the uh, linking-based linking timestamping technology for the long-term preservation of a particular kind of digital records, and those are the digitally signed records. So here's a, a list of the involved partners is in this particular study in, uh, as part of the Interparis Trust's almost 100 uh, different uh, studies. So as you can see, there are some institutions from Croatia, uh, the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences as a leading partner, then the financial agency, which is also uh, a Croatian national certification authority for the digital signatures. Then a privately owned uh, consulting company called Tehed. Of course, we have international partners in this research, and those are um, Enigio Time. Lars has been speaking earlier. We also uh, cooperate with uh, Natasha Kramchowski from uh, Moscow, from Russia, and uh, with uh, Vicky from uh, University of British Columbia. So before, uh, before I proceed with uh, information about the project, I would like to uh, uh, ask ourselves uh, uh, how to preserve the trustworthiness of a digital record with digital uh, signatures, with uh, digital timestamps, uh, with certificates or seals uh, applied to them. Why am I asking uh, this question? Because I'm asking this because uh, the digital certificates uh, that are part of a digital signatures actually have an expiration period of two to five years. So if you have a digital signature uh, of your own, it will be valid for two to five years because of the signing certificates. So how do you then preserve the digitally signed records for, for example, 70 years and still uh, keep the a possibility of change of, of checking and validating the digital signatures that apply to that. So you have several options at hand. First of all, you can uh, try to preserve, preserve digital signatures. And I'll give you uh, the example of uh, EIDAS regulation, which is relying on re-signing. You can decide to eliminate the uh, digital signatures or uh, decide not to try to preserve them. You can thirdly record the trace of the digital signatures in metadata. And this is the concept of the trusted digital repository uh, uh, model is actually applying. Or you can record the digital signatures validity information on the blockchain. And this fourth uh, idea, uh, we were, we were uh, driven by this fourth idea to uh, try to investigate a little bit further on the uh, blockchain and the distributed ledger technologies in order to see uh, what can we do with that. In order to prove that there is a need for such a research, we did uh, three case studies. 
So uh, the first case study, I'll be presenting the first two of them. So the first uh, case study is the case study of the pension fund records in, the, in Croatia. The second one is about the e-tax uh, records also in Croatia. And colleagues from Enigio time had done the third case study, which focused not only on a, a medical records, but on uh, uh, procurement records, uh, as well as the uh, political meetings, notes, records, minutes, records, and so on. So the first case study that we have done jointly uh, in Croatia with a financial, uh, local financial agency called FINA is actually uh, the case study uh, that was uh, uh, the first idea to see uh, what is the problem with the digitally signed records. Actually, they, uh, they are in possession of the uh, retirement fund records, so-called e-regos. It's the, the name of the uh, lo local name of the system. Uh, so they have these digital uh, records being transferred from the system to uh, FINA to preserve them. But when they uh, got them, the digital uh, signatures were already expired. So uh, uh, it is the case of about uh, one million records. And I don't have to stress out uh, uh, the importance of a pension fund or a retirement fund uh, uh, records. So the e-records has stopped working uh, as a system at the end of uh, 2000. Uh, 14 and uh, the documents were originally signed uh, with a valid qualified uh, signature and timestamps a few timestamped a few seconds after being uh, signed. So the programs uh, today cannot actually validate uh, these signatures because additional information is missing, like uh, certification, revocation lists, and certificate chains. So this was prior to EIDAS regulation, which actually requires nowadays certificate authorities to uh, preserve the uh, CRL lists and so on. So uh, re-signing is not feasible because the um, uh, digital signatures have already uh, expired. So all those data, when they uh, got, the, uh, got the documents, actually uh, was transferred to a database. So the information nowadays in a, uh, is in a database. Uh, so Nowadays, uh, the documents with the description of the process and the uh, system safety, as well as with a signed stat statement from FINA, because they are the sole uh, keeper of those uh, records. Uh, those records initially were um, digitally signed by the digital signatures that FINA themselves, uh, 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 by, by the FINA's digital signatures because they are the certification authority providers. So in this particular case, it might not be really uh, an issue. But only those kind of documents could then be considered as valid uh, in the court. So, so far, there were no cases uh, uh, where the original digitally signed documents were needed. So only the data from this database was uh, used because it came from the, uh, uh, let's say, a trusted uh, source. But on the other hand, uh, the other case study, which is the case study of uh, tax administration in Croatia, uh, is a little bit different because they still have uh, the documents uh, that are digitally uh, signed with a uh, valid certificate. So the annual tax returns in Croatia are uh, submitted in the electronic uh, form, and the earliest documents in their systems uh, are from uh, 2006. Although you cannot access uh, those old documents uh, online through their uh, system, uh, it is only the documents from uh, the, the start of 2014 and onward uh, um, uh, available for uh, anyone uh, on the web. So it is the case of the so-called JOPPD uh, forms. Uh, the acronym stands for uh, Croatian name, which translates to English to a report on receipts, income tax, surtax, and contributions for compulsory insurance. They are stored in XML format in databases, uh, database and the file systems, and uh, by uh, legal requirements in Croatia, they have to be preserved for 100 years. And of course, it is a challenge for uh, any digital file format to be preserved for 100 years, right? 
a little bit about uh, a little bit of information about the digital signatures used. So it's a mixture of different kind of uh, kinds of uh, digit, uh, digital signatures. So uh, from 2006 up uh, up to uh, 2012, the XML digital signatures were used. Then from 2013, they switched to uh, 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 XADES, which is XML Advanced Electronic Signatures, and they have used the SHA-1 hash algorithms, which are nowadays uh, considered uh, obsolete. So this is already a glimpse of a potential problem that they might have. So today, when a needed, uh, when when a document, when a tax return is needed uh, in a court of law, uh, the documents are you wouldn't believe it, uh, printed on a paper, and paper printout is authenticated by the tax administration physical stamp. So this is the procedure at the moment. But I guess this is going to change. First of all, because we did the uh, case study with them, so which actually made them think about the problem at hand. And of course, because of the EIDAS regulation and uh, uh, possibilities it offers. So uh, we can conclude from this second case study that the Croatian e tax administration did not try to revalidate the historical uh, signatures. So they are still there in the system. They did not uh, try to re-sign the records before the expiration of digital signatures which is one of the possible solutions that EIDAS is uh, mentioning. They did not uh, consider using e-notary services because there are none in uh, Croatia uh, to confirm the validity of uh, a record. They uh, didn't consider using trusted third party timestamping and digital archiving system services or to validate records at the point of capture into the trusted uh, uh, archival system because uh, no trusted archival system per se was uh, initially uh, created. But uh, also uh, they think that they might investigate uh, the possibilities of creating uh, records management systems uh, to ensure the solid circumstantial evidence of records integrity and authenticity. First, they, uh, their, focus just, they, uh, their focus was just to be able to create a system of uh, submitting e-tax uh, uh, submissions. And of course, they didn't uh, consider using uh, blockchain. So there are, as you can see, quite a lot of uh, places and possibilities for improvements. And I don't think that the creation system is uh, uniquely uh, uh, in, in, this, in this case. So the challenges with digital signature are the short expiration period, the possibilities of certificate uh, revocation uh, while, the still, while the signature is still valid, the need for re-signing, and of course the dependence of the certification authorities. But we have EIDAS regulation mentioned here uh, before. There is a link to EIDAS regulation in any of European uh, languages, so you can uh, go to the link and uh, take a look there, which actually uh, says that there is a pos possibility for you to use the so-called archival timestamps. So you'll have the signer's document and the signed attributes and uh, digital signature. So this is something that is called uh, basic signature. So you can wrap around that a signature with time and add a timestamp to that. And then you can uh, wrap around in an onion-like principle a signature with a long-term validation uh, material, so for example, a certificate and the revocation data. And then you could apply and then reapply from time to time the so-called archival uh, timestamps, which is actually a signature providing a long-term availability of uh, and integrity of validation material. But if you have a thousands or millions of records, you will have to do that for each and every record before uh, this particular record's uh, certificate expires. So it might be uh, a challenge to do so. So the blockchain uh, could be a solution to that. And a lot of uh, uh, concepts like hash, Merkle tree, uh, distributed consensus, you have already uh, heard. So I'll just, as I said, try not to, si to, to repeat, but to systematize uh, what has been said. So there is a uh, hash or a message digest, no matter how uh, large a f initial file is, 
hundred pages document or one page document, it would still uh, be the same kind of uh, hash shown at the bottom of this slide. So this could be in different length uh, uh, variations. So several uh, or many hash values may be hashed together, thus forming a so-called Merkle tree. And what uh, Kulder was uh, mentioned earlier, this would be what uh, you are doing within your system. And then you could uh, create a blockchain for me. You could uh, create a blockchain by uh, chaining this uh, top hashes uh, together. So those uh, why, uh, those uh, um, blue circles uh, down representing different documents and uh, yellow circles representing a top hashes of a day, for example. Of course, the distributed consensus is what is driving the, the blockchain uh, and the ledgers that, that are actually the exact copies of uh, each other are uh, the strength of a uh, blockchain because you'll have to obtain uh, uh, a control over the uh, a qualified majority in order to try to uh, run the blockchain on your own, but uh, you still will not be able to you know, go back and change, uh, and change the, the history. So this is a brief um, uh, diagram of how the blockchain is actually created. So each, each and every uh, hash of the previous block is included in the, in the next block and so on. You have heard a lot about it uh, already. Uh, the important thing is that if you uh, change one document that has been recorded, uh, it will end up with a calculation of a different hash, and that would mean actually that you would invalidate the whole uh, next chain. So uh, actually, as uh, said before, the uh, corrections, uh, the changes are virtually impossible. You should write the new uh, document, the new variation to the uh, blockchain. So what are we uh, suggesting at the Interparis Trust Project, particularly this trust preservation model study, is to create a chain of trusted institutions, like uh, you wouldn't believe so, uh, archives, right? <laughs> so we are the tr traditionally trusted institutions. Why not use that to our uh, benefit? So we could actually establish uh, um, uh, archival institutions uh, blockchain and allow uh, either uh, uh, governmental institutions and uh, private institutions to use it to obtain uh, more security and uh, everything that has been mentioned earlier uh, uh, as uh, benefits of using uh, blockchain. So the presumption would be a number of participating, possibly archival or banking institutions. And um, so I'll skip this. Okay, uh, and I also want to share just briefly the information of, of the yesterday's uh, ISO TC307 blockchain and distributed ledger technologies uh, uh, development meeting that I have attended in uh, Brussels. So uh, it was one of the first meetings and the focus was just to give a brief overview of what is happening and what is going to be uh, developed. You can see here a different uh, parts of, uh, of uh, future uh, standard, st standard being developed. Of course, first and foremost, we'll focus on terminology because we have to know about the concepts and have them defined before we uh, proceed uh, further on. And Vicky will lead this. Uh, uh, my students and I will also participate in that uh, as, as, of course, a lot of other uh, colleagues. So to conclude, uh, in our opinion, the so-called trust chain that I have uh, mentioned that we are uh, going to uh, uh, talk a little bit more about uh, the upcoming in future conference in uh, Zagreb this uh, November could be uh, used uh, to uh, help uh, uh, digital archives trying to long term preserve the digitally signed records to first and foremost confirm the integrity of a record being uh, uh, registered on a blockchain, to confirm that a record was either created or existing at a certain point of time, that is not before it was, not after it was timestamped and registered in the blockchain, 
then of course uh, by uh, using the blockchain to confirm the sequence of records because you know what was first and what was uh, next to support or enhance the non-repudiation uh, of any record because if it's recorded on a blockchain then you could not say no no I didn't I didn't uh, sign that agreement and also to uh, improve the validation possibilities of digitally signed records during the long-term preservation because you could enter the validity of uh, digital signatures on the blockchain and later on when it expires and if the uh, registered hash and uh, uh, compares uh, to the uh, calculated hash, hash later on and if the validity was uh, uh, registered on a blockchain you could uh, conclude that it is as if the digital signature is still valid. So this is one possibility instead of uh, using the re-signing, constant re-signing onion-like uh, principle. So this is something that uh, we think, but also uh, we would like to hear uh, from you. So thank you for your attention.